We celebrate Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem before his crucifixion, and we do that by remembering uh, what he did with this processional gospel. Uh, But first, we begin with our gathering. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. From John chapter 12, the next day the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified then, they remembered these things that had been written of him and had done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify. It was also because they heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went to meet him. The Pharisees then said to one another, you see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. So we're going to process in. You're going to follow me. We're going to go all the way up to the front. We're going to drop our palm fronds before the altar, okay? You can feel free to drop them anywhere along. If you don't want to go up the steps, just throw them at the top of the steps. That's fine, okay? We're just going to have them leading up to the altar. Everybody ready? All right, we're going to bless the palms. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Together, let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we're going to sing and wave our palm fronds as if we're excited that Jesus is entering into Jerusalem with us. Everybody ready? Don't worry, it's warmer inside. All right. Where's where's Regina? She's gonna lead the singing for us. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest.
the, the saying goes that the, if, if we didn't celebrate, the rocks and the hills and every, all of creation would shout with joy. So I appreciate your procession and bearing the cold wind, but today we continue our celebration. We are lucky enough to have young Teddy Theodore here is getting baptized this morning, so we're going to move into our sacrament of baptism. You'll see it on the little insert that should be in your bulletin. Hopefully it didn't blow away in the wind. This, of course, is the Flemmer family. Thank you all so much for being here. It's a joy to have you with us. Um, we're going to begin with our baptism right now. <laughs> God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized into the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have this child baptized into Christ? If so, say, I do. Sponsors and godparents, do you promise to nurture this child in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, say, I do. Thank you. And you, people of God, do you promise to support Theodore or Teddy and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, say we do. We do. Well done. I'm going to invite everybody to please rise as we profess our faith together. This is a part of our most ancient rite of baptism going back to our oldest records. It's something that all of the, the baptized and the families would say together and indeed the whole community. So I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. You may be seated. We come now to the Thanksgiving at the font where we, are, we state our gratitude for baptism. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters at creation. You water the mountains and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carried those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with water from the rock, and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son Jesus was carried to safety and freedom. The flood shall, over, shall not overwhelm us, and the deep shall not swallow us up. For Christ has brought us over to the land of promise. He sends us to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Wash away sin in this cleansing water, clothe the baptized with Christ, and claim your daughters and sons, no longer slave and free, no longer male and female, but one with all the baptized in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we come to the true baptism here. Ready, Teddy? This is going to be a little bit disorienting. We practice, remember? You ready to lie down? I'm going to move this over here. I can give this to you to be ready to dry them a bit once we get the baptism done. You ready? All right, here we go. Can you lie back? Lie back, lie back. It's okay. Oh, your brother needs to go light the candle. Thank you. <laughs> Let's try that one more time. Lean back. Yeah, you're all right. You're all right. 
I know. Theodore, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. I know, it's weird. <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. Ooh, good job, you want to... <laughs> Look at that, he didn't even cry. Nice work. All right. You belong to Christ in whom you have been baptized. Uh, alleluia. Let us pray. You ready? Can we pray? We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you gave, us your son, you gave your son new birth. Cleanse him from sin and raise him to eternal life. Sustain Theodore with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Theodore, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ. Amen. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. That sounds pretty good, right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to invite you to please rise so that we can welcome this newly baptized child of God with joy. Together, we welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share a sign of peace with one another and the newly baptized. Good job, buddy.
I have some announcements, but before, we have this little quilt for our newly baptized Teddy. There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you to the, the quilters who helped make that. I really appreciate it. I'm told he even is a big fan of cows, so good job. Right? <laughs> Uh, we do have some announcements. It, of course, is coming up on Holy Week, so there's several things happening, so bear with me just a moment. First of all, of course, next Sunday is Easter, so come with all the bells on, as it were. Um, we're going to have our uh, brunch afterwards, so I'm going to invite you to bring your brunchy things to share at the potluck, uh, sweet breads and whatnot, fruit and all of the wonderful things we can have. I know that the youth are going to be helping serve that. And I believe that they may be meeting on Saturday to help set up. If you are a youth, more details to come. We'll make sure you get all the details on that. Let's see. After church today, we will be continuing with our new member classes. So if, you are, if, you have, if you're able to stick around, join us after the service, and we'll get that going. Um, I also want to say a big thank you to everybody who showed up yesterday to help clean up. It looks really nice. The church looks great. Um, inside and outside, it was wonderful. So thank you. A big round of applause for everybody who helped out. We had uh, a number of youth help out too, which was tremendous. I um, also want to remind you that uh, next Sunday, being Easter, if you have some cut flowers, I know it's a little, a little chilly, so maybe not too many flowers have bloomed, but if you've got some in your yard you're willing to part with, we would love them for our flower cross on Sunday. So remember to come in just a little bit early so you can put those in the cross. Um, we also will be having our sunrise service at the Greasewood Finnish Church. That's, we're gonna, you know, it's roughly 6.20 a.m. So if you are an early riser or you just speak Finnish or something, <laughs> you are very welcome to join us. If you want to go to church twice because you can't get enough, come to both. It's great because we're doing our regular service here at 10 a.m. as well. Um, and, of course, we've got our Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday services this week. The, both of those services are at 7 p.m. right here at Peace. Um, if you are interested, we're also doing our, our yearly vigil, and, and that's basically you can sign up for slots. It's out on the little bulletin board out there on the, uh, the cabinet in the narthex. Um, if you want to spend half an hour, an hour in prayer um, to help hold that vigil, so we do our vigil from the end of the Monday Thursday service to the beginning of the Good Friday service. So we've got several slots left, and it is a deeply meaningful time. So if you haven't ever taken the opportunity to do that or just haven't been able to, I highly recommend it. It's a really wonderful time to be in prayer and, and feel that closeness with God. Um, let's see, what else? I think that is all of them. Anything else? Yes, Gayla. Oh. That's right. So just for those folks at home, I guess that's kind of unfair. They don't get, to, they don't get any cake. But uh, I, I'm repeating things for our live stream, of course, but we will be having cake and a little celebration to celebrate Teddy and his baptism today. So join us for coffee and cake after the service. All right. Thank you all very much. We can now continue with our service, and we begin with the opening dialogue. Thank you. If you please rise. Jesus Christ, light of life, shine in your Jesus Christ, light of life, shine in your people here. Stay with us now, but fear to flight as morning ushers in. let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's sing together now our gospel acclamation. Let your 
Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry Jesus' cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the, char the charge against him which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once one of them ran and got a sponge filled with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs, <coughs> excuse me, the tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those who were with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> so on Palm Sunday, we always have a little bit of a... I don't know, a hard turn. We get the joy of Jesus and the disciples and all the people in Jerusalem celebrating Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. We get the, the palm fronds and we get the pomp and the circumstance of Jesus entering the city just like a king of old. In, in fact, the, it's, a, it's a certain type of king that Jesus is entering as. It's as King Solomon. When he rides on a donkey, that signals to the people of Jerusalem the type of king Jesus intends to be. And that is a king of peace. When that, that humble entry on the donkey means I have come not to bring war, but to bring order, to bring peace, to bring goodness, right? Security. I always like to remind folks every year when we come in and we're singing Hosanna and we say Hosanna to our Lord in the highest heaven. Hosanna means save us. Save us. They're looking to this new king to save them from the, the fate that they have found themselves in, right? And then, of course, we come to the gospel text and we take that sharp left-hand turn. This great king that entered the city very quickly is set up for crucifixion and death. And Jesus dies on the cross. And we'll get into that story a little more deeply as we move into Holy Week, especially on Good Friday. We remember that great sacrifice and the darkness of the tomb. But today, I want us to talk a little bit about maybe what the people of Jerusalem were thinking. And maybe what we're thinking, too. I don't know. Because I think a lot of this must have caught them off guard. They were celebrating this Jesus, this person they had heard so much about that had done these wonderful miracles. They thought this was the new King David that would save them, right? Save them from the Roman occupation, save them from the corruption of the, the priestly class and, the, and King Herod and all the nonsense they'd been through for really for generations. Depends when you start counting. It could have been 300 years 300 years of uncertainty and bad leadership and foreigners who are telling them what to do all the time. It was a hard place for them to be. It was no wonder that they were looking with such anticipation for the Messiah, for someone to come and save them, because they had no power of their own to do it. But at the same time, the, the, the people who were in power, the Pharisees, the scribes, the leadership, King Herod himself... They couldn't accept this opportunity, right? They saw Jesus being hailed as a king, and rather than looking with excitement, they saw a threat, which sounds very human to me, actually. 
Have you ever been in charge of something and then somebody else who clearly has talent shows up and you feel a little bit threatened? Maybe, yeah. I certainly have. I mean, not here, obviously, but no. <laughs> Actually, I grew up in a church where that very thing happened. My home congregation that I grew up in out on the west side, and I won't say any names to protect the innocent, of course, but there was a senior pastor who was actually quite a good pastor. Did a good job, uh, you know, uh, good at some things, not as good at others, just like everybody, just like me, normal stuff. But then we hired an associate pastor, a young guy, who was quite talented and fairly charismatic. And rather than embracing and using that talent, the senior pastor got a little bit defensive. And there's a lot of history about that. And some of the reasons were good. I'm not throwing them under the bus. Let's understand that. But that, that fear of what is new, that fear of this threat of talent, made things real awkward for everybody, right? To be threatened by something that should have been a gift. It happens. It happens all the time, right? We miss the signs. We miss the opportunities that God gives us and says, hey, I'm giving you this gift to do new things. But instead, too often, we just resort back to the old things. Even though... They probably weren't working that well to begin with, right? Sounds a little bit like a lot of churches, doesn't it? A little bit like a lot of any institution, in fact. Change threatens us. It scares us. It makes us resort back to the things we used to know rather than move forward and embrace the goodness that could be in our future, which has always seemed strange to me as a minister, as a pastor, right? And probably I'll fall into this trap again, you know? I won't embrace the new when I should, and I'll resort to the old because it's easier and more familiar. But we are a people of blessings, and God being willing to do a new thing for us all the time, and yet we're afraid to do them, right? Which, why are we afraid? We know God changes things up on us. We see that in this lesson today, right? When Jesus died on the cross and rose again on the third day, I can't think of a more surprising change of plans, right? It is in our DNA, in our history, that new things can transform us, right? But, uh, you know, I don't want to give them too much, too much shade, as it were, too much trouble, because they didn't recognize what was going on. It's also very human to miss the signs, isn't it, right? I think I'm going to tell you a little bit of an embarrassing story. It embarrasses me. Maybe you won't think it's that embarrassing, right? This is a story for me when I was young, right? I don't know if my wife even knows this one. This could be interesting. So when I was very young, like fifth grade, right, we're talking really young, I had a crush on a girl. Yeah, it happened, right? Cru crush on a girl, she was, uh, I think her name was Beth, I'm not 100%, it's been a long time now. And I didn't tell anybody, but then somehow a rumor got started that I liked this girl, and I was like, oh no, I was terrified, because I was a fifth grader and very unwise. And so the first thing I did was go up to one of her friends and say, I don't like her, I don't even like her as a person, I don't even want to talk to her, because I, I was dumb. And I very quickly recognized that I had made a terrible mistake because the friend looked at me, looked very sad, and ran off and told her friend. And the friend immediately looked unhappy, and then they were talking about me together. And I realized very quickly, even as a dumb fifth grader, that she had liked me too. And I had just messed everything up because I was afraid to see that something good could happen. And I was embarrassed, and I was a dumb little kid, and we could make lots of excuses, but... That was an opportunity I missed because I was afraid, right? Because I was afraid that I, I don't even know what I was afraid of. I was afraid I'd be embarrassed. I was afraid of girls still, so that was part of it, right? But to this day, when I think about that, I just roll my eyes at myself and be like, why? Why did I bother? Why did I say anything at all? What I should have said was nothing, right? But I didn't. Just like the scribes and Pharisees, instead of resisting Jesus, they could have partnered with him, but they were afraid. They were intimidated. They were scared. They didn't understand what he was trying to do, and it made them resort back to what they used to know. They missed the signs, just like I missed the signs. I should have realized that this little girl liked me because she was afraid to talk to me, just like I was afraid to talk to her, right? But I didn't. Have there been times in your lives, right, when you've made similar mistakes, when you've Chosen the path of safety or fear or whatever and, and been afraid to take the jump, to, to, to make the move, to do whatever it is that might have led into something great, right? It's a very human thing, a very normal thing for us to do, unfortunately. But 
we need to watch for those signs in our lives from God. Because God does put those changes, those opportunities in our path. We need to be ready for them and trust that God will see us through them, right? Because those opportunities do show up. New partnerships, new opportunities. We see renewal can happen in baptism, just like with Teddy, right? These new things can happen. These new joys can enter our lives. We don't have to always be afraid of what's to come. And Jesus usually isn't very subtle. That's what I've found, too, right? When I was coming, looking to become a minister, and I wasn't really telling people. I was, a young, I was pretty young when I started thinking about it. A lot of people kept coming up to me and being like, you know what, you'd make a pretty good pastor. And then they'd yuck it up, and I'd be like, you know? I'd get real nervous. But God wasn't subtle, right? These opportunities that came around. God would put people in my life that uh, just kept pushing me towards the ministry, towards God, towards service. And eventually, even though I kind of wanted to do other things, right? I like science. I like engineering. My dad, to this day, I always say he's still waiting for me to become an engineer, Um, and those things would have been fine, but I was lucky. God pushed me hard enough that I couldn't avoid the signs. I couldn't resist them, and so here I am, and it brings me no end of joy to be in this position to do this service, even when things are hard and a little bit ugly. It is a joy to do this, to share God's message with all of you. So I ask you this week, this Palm Sunday. What are the signs that God is giving you in your lives? What are the messages you hear? What are the gentle pushes or maybe the hard shoves you might feel to say, let's try something new. Try something new for God in your faith, in your life. Do not be afraid to make those changes because those changes are just as likely to be a blessing and a joy as they are to be a hardship, right? We as humans, I think, are wired to avoid avoid pain more than we are to embrace change, right? Our risk assessment, deep down in our DNA, says run away much more often than it tells us to leap, leap into the unknown and see what God has in store. Don't be afraid to leap. Don't be afraid to trust what God is pushing you to do. Don't be afraid to to change for the better whether it's a personal thing, whether it's a community thing, whether it's a congregational thing, whatever it is, let's have faith in the future God has in store for us and not remain the same, diminish, be persuaded by fear rather than hope. Amen. I'd like to invite you now to please rise for our hymn of the day. I always have to chuckle at this one because the hymn number, of course, is 666. But I'm glad that our hymn writers were not too afraid to use that number, right? It's a great hymn. Let's sing with joy.
Thank you. Please be seated. We continue our service now with our offering. If I could have my acolytes come forward. Let us pray. God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. <clears throat> Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. We come now to our prayers of intercession. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let us pray. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. Save your church, O God. Enable us to boldly confess in every time and place that Jesus Christ is Lord. With the humility of a servant, equip congregations, synods, and other ministry settings to proclaim your extravagant love for all. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Save your creation, O God. Every living being you have made has purpose. Give us renewed appreciation of farm animals who labor in the fields, service animals who accompany their human companions, and beloved pets who live alongside us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Save the peoples of the earth, O God. Restore dignity to those who are scorned and persecuted for their religious beliefs or political activism, and deliver them from the hand of their enemies. Bring peace to places where conflict runs deep. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Save those who cry to you in any need, O God. Watch over all who are incarcerated or awaiting trial, and stand with those who are unjustly accused. Be present with those feeling isolated, lonely, or fearful. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Save us in your love, O God. Guide the work of church musicians, pastors, choirs, readers, deacons, technicians, acolytes, and all who assist in worship. Sustain them in their leadership as they accompany congregations through this holy week. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For whom else do the people of God pray?
all victims of violence. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Save us at the last, O God. We give you thanks for your saints of old who embodied your servant, your servant love. As you came to their aid, so deliver us in times of trial, that every knee would bend in praise to you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. If you please rise now as you're able for the great thanksgiving. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right to give our thanks and, and praise. praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God. indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God, you are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together, let us pray as Christ taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Here at Peace Lutheran Church, all people are welcome at the Lord's table. So once it is prepared, I will invite all of you to come forward and share in this blessed meal. Uh, this morning, we're going to do our sort of hybrid model that we've been doing lately. Um, if you do not want to come and kneel at the rail, you come to the, your left-hand side and just meet the, the people offering communion right up front. If you would like a moment to kneel and pray, please come up to your, your right-hand side uh, and, and come to the rail on this side. Thank you all so much. If I could have my helpers come forward. Lamb of God, you take away the spirit of the world. Have mercy.
If you please rise now for the blessing and dismissal. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together now our sending song, Baptized in Water.
Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.